Back in the day when the computer was invented, it was big enough to fill a room. Then after several years of experiments, we were able to reduce its size as shown in the picture. Something like this. During those days, every computer was working as an individual device. There was not a concept of computer network for the communication between them. Then the engineers thought about to create a computer network to make the communication easier between multiple computers. Hence the concept of computer network arise. Initially, all the computer network were purely vendor specific. That means the specific computer from a vendor can communicate together. But it cannot communicate with the computer from the another vendor. For example, this is the company called IBM. And IBM says, hello, we are the IBM company. We manufacture the IBM computer. We can create a computer network and we can make the communication between the multiple computer. But the condition is all the computer must be from the IBM. Only the IBM computer can communicate together. In the same way, another company called Macintosh. And this company says that we are the manufacturer of Macintosh computer and we can create a network and all the computer in that network can communicate together. But the condition is all the computer must be from the Macintosh. Here the scenario was the computer from a specific manufacturer can communicate together by creating a network. But, but it cannot communicate with the computer from the other manufacturer. So in this situation, if someone want to create a network, he need to get all the computer from one single manufacturer. There was not any industry standard for the computer networks. Then after several research and development, the first computer network has introduced, which is called ARPANET. It was introduced in 1975. The ARPANET stands for Advanced Research Project Administration Network. ARPANET introduced as an industry standard in the computer network and by using the ARPANET, the computer from the multiple vendors can able to communicate together. The ARPANET was very popular and later on it was renamed as TCP IP which stands for Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol. Welcome to the world of TCP IP. Welcome to CCNA 203.1 Implementing and Administering Cisco Solutions Chapter Number 16 TCP IP Network Model In this chapter we will understand about the TCP IP network model. We will discuss about different layers of TCP IP model. And finally, we will discuss about the advantages of TCP IP model. Welcome to IRASH Academy, an unlimited learning platform to enhance your skills. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. TCP IP network model. So what is the TCP IP network model? The TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol. Basically, it is a combination of Transmission Control Protocol and Internet Protocol. TCP IP is a conceptual framework used for designing and understanding the computer networks. So basically, TCP IP governs the network flow through a computer network or the Internet. To clarify this statement, let's go to one example. We know that every country has its transport authority who control the traffic laws in that country. They are responsible for the traffic laws in that country. They set several rules to ease the transportation in their country. For example, what a driver can do and what they cannot do in the public roads. What are the legal activities and illegal activities? What are the violations and what are the punishment? For example, if a driver is going through a highway, at what speed he can go and what sign he can stop and where the pedestrian has the priority to cross the road etc. So in that country this transport authority set several rules. In the same way the TCP IP are the protocols that governs the transportation of traffic in a computer network or in the internet. TCP IP is the industry standard protocol that control the communication in the computer network. TCP IP is the foundation of the internet and is widely used for the communication in the computer networks. 
As we said, the TCP IP is the industry standard and it is followed by the multiple manufacturer and vendors for the network communication. The TCP IP model consists of four layers. Basically, TCP IP use layers to describe the network communication. They divided the total communication in between four layers and each layer has its own function. We will discuss about the layers later in this chapter. The TCP IP model is open standard that could be used on any network. As we said, the TCP IP is the industry standard. It is not restricted to any specific vendor or manufacturer. Any vendor can use the TCP IP protocol. And nowadays it is mandatory for any kind of network communication, the support from the TCP IP. So when the manufacturer make any network device, they need to make sure that those devices can talk to the TCP IP and follow the protocol. Now let's discuss about the TCP IP network model. In this screen, you can see four layers of TCP IP network model. Starting from the bottom, layer one, network access layer. Then layer two, internet layer. Then layer three, transport layer and layer 4 application layer. So in the TCP IP network model, each layer has its own function and rules to control the communication. Now let's discuss about each layer and their function. So first we will talk about the network access layer, the layer 1. Layer 1 mainly deal with the physical connections between the devices on the same network. It includes the protocol for error detection and correction as well as addressing at the local network level. So this layer is mainly deal with the physical connections in the network. So what are those physical connections? We know the physical connection means the type of connectivity, whether it is a network cable or serial connection, etc. It also deal with the physical address of the devices, that is the MAC address. And it also manage the error detection and correction process in the network. Now let's go to one step up, the second layer, internet layer. Internet layer is responsible for addressing, routing and fragmenting data packet across the different networks. The internet layer handles the logical addressing of the devices and the routing of the data packet. In any network, the network device should have one logical address which is called the IP address to start the communication in that network. This device is identified by its IP address. This layer is also manage the routing function from one network to another network. Now let's go to the transport layer. Transport layer responsible for providing network services directly to end user or application. It include various protocol that facilitate the communication between application and the network. The two major protocol using in the transport layer is TCP and UDP, which stands for transmission control protocol and user datagram protocol. These are the two main protocols that network devices are using in transport layer. TCP is a reliable protocol but it is slow in action. On the other hand, UDP is a non-reliable protocol but it is very fast in action. Now let's go to the application layer. The application layer is responsible for providing network services directly to the end user or the application. It includes various protocols that facilitate the communication between application and the network. The protocols like FTP, SFTP, HTTPS are example for the application layer protocols. They are mainly working in the application layer of the TCP IP network model. Now let's talk about the advantages of TCP IP network model. What are the advantages of TCP IP network model? The point number one, interoperability. TCP IP facilitate interoperability between different types of hardware and software from various vendors. This interoperability is very crucial for the global nature of the internet where diverse devices and systems need to communicate seamlessly. Point number two, scalability. TCP IP is highly scalable, accommodating a vast number of devices on a network. This scalability is essential for the ever-expanding size of the internet and modern networks, supporting a wide range of devices from smartphones to servers. Point number three, open standards. TCP IP based on the open standard, which means that the protocol and specifications are publicly available. 
This openness promotes innovation and competition among vendors leading to a diverse ecosystem of network devices and software. Point number 4. Global Connectivity TCP IP enables global connectivity, allowing devices on different networks and in different parts of the world to communicate with each other. This is a fundamental characteristic that has contributed to the development of the World Wide Web and the global Internet. Point number 5. Robustness and Reliability The TCP protocol, part of the TCP IP suite, provides the reliable connection-oriented communication. It ensures that the data is delivered accurately and in the correct order. The ability to recover from the lost or corrupted data enhances the overall robustness of the communication. Point number 6. Support for different network types. TCP IP can be implemented on various types of networks, including wired and wireless networks. It is not tied to a specific network technology, making it adaptable to different environment. Point number 7. Modularity and Layered Architecture The TCP IP model's layered architecture promotes modularity. Each layer has a specific functions and changes or updates in one layer do not necessarily affect the others. This modular design simplifies development, troubleshooting and upgrades. Point number 8. Well established and mature. TCP IP has been in use for several decades and has undergone extensive testing and development. Its maturity and widespread adoption make it a well understand and a trusted protocol suite. Point number 9. Support for a variety of applications. TCP IP supports a broad range of applications and services from the simple file transfer to complex web application. This versatility makes it suitable for a wide array of use cases. In this chapter, we have understood the TCP IP network model. We have discussed about the different layers of TCP IP model. And we have discussed about the advantages of TCP IP model. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos.